Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Hanging your food when you're camping in bear country is a classic approach to bear safety, but there's actually an awful lot of controversy around that approach. Today, I'm gonna to explore that controversy. I'm gonna share with you where and when I choose to hang my food and when I don't. And I'm also gonna give you some tips on how to uh, optimize your bear hang to make it most effective when you're camping in bear country. The problem most people have with hanging their food is they don't get it high enough or they don't get it far enough away from the trunk of a tree. Bears are excellent climbers and they're gonna find a way to get that food down if you don't hang it well. These are not good bear hangs. These are bear pinatas. Pinatas for bears, you know what I mean. There are even a number of experts out there who don't even recommend that you try to hang your food in a tree. Adam Skirka is one of these experts. He is a relatively famous backpacker and a tripping guide. He has hiked thousands and thousands of miles in bear country and has plenty of experience. He's written a, a, an article on his blog about uh, not hanging food in a bear tree, and that's been picked up by a number of magazines. I'll put a link uh, to that uh, blog down below so that you can check it out for yourself. It's quite informative. Um, but he outlines a number of reasons why you might not even want to try this. Number one, and, and these aren't in his order, but number one is you probably suck at it. It, it can be quite difficult to hang uh, food in a tree. Uh, number two is it, it can be very time consuming. Um, and number three, it can cause injury. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong uh, hanging your food in a tree. I call it a comedy of errors. The rope can come back at you, a limb can fall on you. And in extremely rare cases, uh, one woman was killed by a tree that fell on her while, while trying to uh, create a bear hang. So that's, that's a, a, a concern for sure. And number four is that it can be very difficult to keep your food away from a determined bear. Bears can be very determined, they can be very smart, and they're excellent climbers. So you need a really good bear hang to uh, keep your food away from a bear. And number five, it's sometimes actually impossible to hang your food in a tree, especially if you're camping in an environment with no trees. You're gonna have to figure something else out. And another uh, great source of, of contrasting information on this topic is Cliff Jacobson. He is a uh, US-based outdoor writer and experienced guide. He has a tremendous amount of experience and has a lot of opinions on this subject. It's worth checking him out. I'll put a link below to uh, where you can find some of his videos in his website. Uh, Cliff points out very articulately that bears can climb trees. Yeah, the problem is bears climb trees. And he's very right about this. So let's check out some bears in action. This guy's gonna demonstrate that black bears can climb trees very quickly and that they don't seem to be afraid of heights. Brown bears are also excellent climbers despite their size. This guy's going after some food in the tree. And bears are also very agile. Watch this guy jump. And they can climb down a tree just as quickly as they can climb up. And this bear is going to demonstrate some determination and go after this bird feeder. It's not going to let the fact that it's hanging on a horizontal rope bother it one bit. That's determination for sure. And it's not afraid of falling. It's going to grab this bird feeder and try and pull it down. So this is what you're up against if you're going to hang your food. So do I hang my food when I'm in bear country? The answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. For me, it depends on the situation. I know many, many backcountry trippers and most don't hang their food when they're in the backcountry. That's because they're backcountry trippers. Bears are smart and they learn behaviors on based on their own experiences. Once a bear learns something that provides a reward, it's gonna remember um, that and it's gonna develop new behaviors. Bears can learn what a food pack is and they can even learn to bite ropes that suspend food. I've even seen bears climb trees, reach over and, and take down a, a food bag hung in a tree. Bears have even learned to wait at the end of portages for people who've left their food bags behind to go get the other load. So bears are really, really, really smart and they behave differently in the back country than they do in the front country. So first let's talk about the back country. What is it? Well, for me, the back country is a place where humans are still relatively rare and those that do venture into the back country have pretty good camping skills. They keep a clean campsite and they usually bring food that is mostly dried, not smelly, and they burn or pack out their garbage. In the back country, you're less likely to come across a bear that has been rewarded by campers' food or garbage. So if bears don't learn that there's easy food to be had in, at a campsite, they generally won't become a problem. 
The front country is very different. You're still in the front country if you're likely uh, less than a day or a day and a half travel away from an entry point. Uh, these are areas that are going to get a lot more campers, a lot more use. The same campsites are going to get used a lot more frequently. And most of those campers are, are going to have minimal camping skills. They're going to tend to uh, leave a messier campsite. They're going to tend to have wetter, heavier, smellier foods. Um, these are sites where I often find garbage and I've even found excess food thrown away in the forest. So when you're in the front country, even if you keep a clean campsite and take care of your food properly, you can have negative bear encounters because of the campers who came before you. Now there can be a lot of variation in what is front country and what is back country. Uh, if your area is very, very popular and is heavily used, you could have front country conditions even when you're deep into the wilderness. Conversely, uh, you could be in a very remote, remote area and have uh, backcountry conditions uh, very, very close to the entry point. This is something you're gonna to have to figure out for yourself depending on your location. And you're gonna to have to make your own decisions on this. I'm just sharing my experience and what has worked for me, uh, but I rarely hang my food when I'm in the backcountry. When I'm in the front country, I almost always do. So key for me is always to keep a clean campsite. I clean up my meals right away. Well, number one is to keep a clean uh, campsite. You'll notice that our uh, kitchen is all clean. As soon as we're done the meal, we wash everything up, uh, leave it to dry. Um, there's no messes, there's no spills on the ground. I bring mostly dry food that is sealed in plastic bags, and that food is usually sealed again in a plastic container like this. Uh, this is a food barrel that I often bring. It is not bear resistant, but it does cut down on the smells. Bears have a really great nose and an excellent sense of smell, and I believe they can still smell my food if they're close enough to my, my food barrel, but I do everything that I can to cut down on those smells to make my food and my campsite less interesting to bears. So when I'm in the back country and I'm storing my food for the night, I'll make sure that my food barrel is a good distance away from my sleeping area. There's no hard and fast rules on, on what is good, um, but I wanna make sure there's enough distance between me and the food that if a bear comes in the middle of the night, um, I can get out of my tent safely and, and think about what I'm gonna do next. I will nearly always tie that barrel to a tree so that if a bear does come, it won't take the food very far. Is our food barrel? Um, we either hang it in a tree, which is what they recommend, or we'll, because this one's really big and heavy, and I, I can get it up using a pulley, but it's still a bit of a challenge, and it can become a comedy of errors when you're trying to find the, the perfect branch to hang it on, um, we'll tie it to a tree. Um, I'll likely stack some clean pots and pans on top of that food barrel to act as a bit of an alarm. If, uh, if a bear comes to get my food in the middle of the night, I'll have bear bangers and bear spray ready to uh, defend my food so the bear doesn't get a reward. We uh, always carry bear spray. We've got two cans, one for each of us. And at night, we put them right beside our tent, um, one on either side. We have a two-door tent. The other thing we have is a set of flares and bear bangers. Now, interestingly enough, I've had lots of encounters with bears in the front country, but I've never had a negative bear encounter in the back country. These are all just precautions I take. I've never had to use them. But like I said, the front country is very different. Even if you're going on a long backcountry trip, um, you usually need to spend one or two nights in the front country on your way to accessing the backcountry. And based on my experiences, I know that front country bears behave very differently. And so I nearly always hang my food when I'm in a front country situation. And over the years, I've learned to make pretty good bear hangs. And as Andrew Skirka points out in his article, sometimes it's just impossible to hang your food. There might be no trees where you're camping. You could be in the mountains or the Arctic barren lands or the desert, and there just aren't any trees. So what are you gonna do then? Well, if it exists, you should use permanent infrastructure, uh, such as a bear locker or a metal bear pole. Uh, if, if stored properly, if the latch is, is not broken, these uh, things are gonna be 100% effective at protecting your food. So if that permanent infrastructure doesn't exist, an another great alternative is a bear resistant container like this. This is a bear vault. There's, there's many other brands on the market. Uh, these are bear resistant. They're almost 100% effective. As long as they aren't damaged, they're going to keep your food separate from a bear. Bear resistant containers are tested with real bears to ensure that the food is kept safe and the bear doesn't get a reward.
The only time that they have failed is when uh, there's damage to the container. Um, however, there was one bear in upstate New York who uh, figured out how to chew through uh, a bear vault. So they're nearly perfect, but nothing is, is completely perfect. Another lighter option I often use in uh, bear country, especially when backpacking, is the earth sack. It is a bear resistant fiber that keeps your food separate from bears. Um, however, it can be punctured by bear teeth, and if there's liquids inside, the bear could get a bit of a reward. A lot of people like the earth sack, uh, number one, because it's light, but it also gives you some options. You can plan to hang your food, and if you get to a campsite that doesn't have an adequate uh, tree to hang your food, then you can just tie this to a tree, and it provides some protection. So I think it's a really, really great option. So I always recommend following the rules of the jurisdiction you're in. The local authorities know what they're doing, they've learned from their experiences, and they've set rules accordingly. Those rules may be very different from one backcountry area to another, but there's a reason for that. If permanent infrastructure is available, then use it. If the rules say to bring a bear-resistant container, do that. So let's look at some of those other factors that Andrew mentions in his article. Those include, you probably suck at it, uh, it's time consuming, it can cause injury or even death, and bears can be very determined. So what this tells me is that if you plan to hang your food in bear country, you should practice, you should get good at it. It is possible to get good at it, and I can offer you some tips to help you out. So number one, I recommend if you plan on hanging your food, that you practice and try and get good at it. People practice lighting fires, people practice building emergency shelters. Why on earth does no one ever practice uh, throwing a rope over a tree? It really is a camping skill that should be practiced if you intend to use it. So there's a lot of things you can do to help you throw a rope over a tree that will reduce the time it takes and improve your safety. Uh, practice throwing. Um, why don't people practice that? It's something that should be done. I, I kind of prefer a, a straight arm uh, lob method. I find that really works for me. I get it almost every time. I recommend, highly recommend using a rope bag. It's really hard to tie a rope to a rock and have it hold properly. And, uh, and so I recommend bringing a small bag, fill it with rocks, tie that bag to a rope and throw that instead. Another tip I have is to coil your rope properly. I actually have a video on this. If you learn to coil your rope properly, it will minimize tangles and it will save you an awful lot of frustration when you go to try and throw that rope over a tree limb. And another tip I have is to choose your rope carefully. Uh, again, I have a video on this. Some ropes uh, tend to snag on tree bark and cause tangles and you don't want that. And sometimes that food bag or barrel can be very heavy, and in that case, I recommend using pulleys. Pulleys uh, can give you a little bit more advantage, make pulling that rope uh, a little bit easier, and if the load is very heavy, you can use two pulleys uh, to give you some mechanical advantage and lift a, a heavier than normal food bag or barrel. So another thing you wanna do is make sure you find a good location for your food. Uh, try and put it away from your campsite if you're gonna hang your food. Try and find a tree that isn't commonly used. That might throw a bear that's habituated off a little bit. This is the classic diagram of how far away your tent should be from your cooking area and your bear hang. Um, and, and ideally everything is oriented with the wind direction so that the smells are blowing away from your sleeping area. There's a couple problems with this. One, it's it's really hard to find this exact situation um, where you have the appropriate spacing that you can put all these things in the right place. Uh, and as well, the wind direction, even if you're lucky to get it right when you're set up, that wind direction is very likely to change. So sites like this are extremely rare. And my best advice to you is to use this as a concept to guide you. Um, but make the best with what you have where you're camping. Um, you also want to make sure that when you hang that food, it is up nice and high that a bear can't reach it, um, at least 10 feet, if not 12. And you want to make sure that it's far enough away from the trunk. A lot of books say five feet at least, some, some say four. I recommend exceeding that because I've seen bears reach from a tree trunk over to a, a bear bag and pull it down. You also want to make sure that that bear bag hangs lower than the tree limb or any sort of uh, cross rope that you might have between two trees. Uh, again, you want to make sure that's good four or five feet down below the limb or the cross rope. The two tree method can be very effective when you, when you can't find trees with a good branch, 
But uh, remember, bears can climb a horizontally strung rope. So don't put a lot of tension on that rope. L make sure that rope sags. Make sure that your food is hanging below that rope. Um, and that will reduce the uh, opportunity for a bear to climb across that rope and get your food. So where and when should you hang your food? Well, I can only speak for myself and my own experience, but when I'm in the back country, I tend not to hang my food. When I'm in the front country, I almost always hang my food. And when I do, I take a lot of precautions and a lot of care to make sure that I have a very successful and effective bear hang. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.